He will never beg in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for provision. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the glory that will always reside upon this house in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the souls that will be won in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray for the upcoming crusade. We call forth all the souls that will be coming in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray for the 30th of June. Begin to pray for the souls that will be coming. They are coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. In the name of Jesus Christ, as they come, their needs will be met. As they come, their miracles will be granted. In the name of Jesus Christ, there will be a mighty deliverance. There will be a cloud of miracles that are happening on that day. Begin to pray. Come on, shoot in the spirit. Begin to see the crusade. Souls are coming. Souls are coming. Souls are coming souls are coming in the mighty name of Jesus Christ as they come they will be saved as they come they will be fed with the word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Korebe shikola masendi mantoske balado harede bondekai just pray in the spirit just pray in the spirit in the name of Jesus hallelujah just pray in the spirit hallelujah God is an awesome God and God is a good God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the most important things ever is like what I always say, getting to understand not only why things are done but how to do them. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So we bless the name of the living God. Um, there are many principles in life. If you see when we, grow, when we grew up, there are things that I believe that we were told not to do that we did. And we realized when we also grew up, there are things we told certain people not to do, and they did. I was thinking about it during the week, and I realized that most of the mistakes we have done in life are things that we knew because we were told. But there is something that happens with immaturity. Immaturity makes you to think you are mature. That's why anyone with pride will never acknowledge they have pride. That's why every selfish person will never acknowledge they are selfish. But rather, a selfish person might tell you that they have self-love. <laughs> a selfish person might tell you that they have self-worth. So, as you begin to grow in the things of God, you understand that that is the reason why when Jesus began to teach, there are things that he began to bring out. Praise God. Just push this one backwards. Oh, down there. Hallelujah. Amen. There are things that he begins to bring out. Deep things that he begins to bring out. And one of the things he brought out that came to me was, unless you have the heart of a child, you will never enter the kingdom. My God. That aspect is a decision. He did not say you pray the heart. He says, unless you, it means you develop it yourself. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So may God bless you. May God be with you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Celebrate God as you sit down. Just reduce my volume a little bit. Celebrate God as you sit down. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you being blessed? Amen. Are you being blessed? Amen. Do you have your Bible? Amen. On the mic. Do you have your Bible? Amen. Praise God. Let me see your Bible. <laughs> the first line. Say, this is my Bible. First, I am what he says I am. 
I am what he says I am. And I shall be what he says I shall be. In the name of Jesus. This is my Bible. I am what he says I am. And I shall be what he says I shall be. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are going to be talking in a few minutes on the levels of prayer. Look at anybody say the levels, the levels of, prayer. of prayer. The levels, the levels of, prayer. of prayer. This can be one of the most debated topics, especially from scholars and people that teach the Bible. Because some may not agree with what they have read. Why? Because most of the times we explain things according not only to what is written, but because the person who interprets has the flesh, the spirit, and the soul. So sometimes what interprets determines the revelation that comes. That's why one scripture can have 70 interpretations. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? That's why I can come with the revelation of prayer and the same scripture that I preach prayer, someone can come and teach business. So it depends with who and what is interpreting for the meaning to come out. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So we have been going through scripture. And as we go through scripture, as we go through scripture, you understand that Jesus spoke something as he was giving the disciples the mandate. He says, go into the world and make disciples. Disciples coming from the word discipline. <laughs> meaning it is impossible for a person to follow God and say they are a disciple if they are not disciplined am I communicating to somebody am I communicating to somebody am I communicating to somebody that is why you see when Jesus teaches about even topics like Forgiveness. There is an in-depth, it hits the heart because what he teaches, there are principles and principles can never be effective unless they are applied with discipline and there has to be consistent. So he says, teach them when you are to make disciples and baptize them. So even before you baptize them, you need to teach them so that they know what they are doing. But one of the topics that the Lord has sent me into the world to speak is the topic of prayer. You understand that when it comes to prayer, prayer is not only about teaching. There has to be a discipline. One has to be disciplined in order to trade and in order to have an effective prayer life. That prayer does not become an event. It becomes you. Am I communicating to somebody? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When you read your Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter number 21. When you read your Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter number 21, verse 13. Jesus began to unveil a mystery. And the mystery Jesus unveiled might be one of the things that might be very controversial to those that are serving him. Are, are we there? Yes, are we there? Yes, Matthew chapter number 21, verse 13. And he said unto them. And he said unto them. It is written. It is written. 
My house mm -hmm. shall be called the mm -hmm. house of prayer, mm -hmm. but you have made it a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. Repeat it again. And he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Imagine Jesus coming with not only a revelation, but he's coming to establish what is already written. And he said to them, my house shall be called the house of prayer. That can erase everything else that is being done in the house of God. <laughs> that can erase every other activity that is being done. Because it says my. So it means other houses that are not the house of prayer are not his. Because when he comes, he, he, he defines and says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of lions. A den is actually a sanctuary. And he said, you have made it to become a den of thieves. So which means the building is still the same, but the activity being done. Now, you realize that when he says, my house shall be a house, house of prayer, there is no individual pointed it. Because prayer does not point out individuals. But when he begins to point out thieves, thieves, it has to be an individual. It has to be an activity. It has to be a profession. Mastered. And not only a thief, he said thieves, it means it's a league. <laughs> so with another understanding, you realize that when prayer is removed from the house of God, thiefery enters and thrives. Because what prayer does, prayer, prayer when it is applied, it changes the one who prays. Prayer changes the one who prays. Amen. That is the reason why when a person comes in the house of God, you don't tell them to change. Teach them to pray. It is in prayer that the more they pray, the more their spirit is watered. My spiritual father always says, you cannot enter into water and come out dry. You can't. You can't. And he's one of the men who inspired me to pray because early in the 90s, they went into the mountain. There were three men. They went into the mountain and they were praying in the mountain of Bindura. And it started to rain. And they went down the mountain and no drop of rain made them wet. An atmosphere of prayer. <laughs> I wish one day it would be soon. An atmosphere of prayer that affects the environment. Am I communicating to somebody? Yes, Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. I'm saying no drop of rain when rain is coming. Until prayer becomes you. I'm not talking about shabba, ba, ba, ba. No, no. Until prayer. 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 It's a personality. Prayer is a personality. It's not an activity. It's a personality. When you meet a man who prays, you don't need to be introduced. You know. You know. It is an atmosphere that it carries. So when we read in the book of Matthew, where we started, when Jesus began to teach about prayer in Matthew 6, 
What he began to speak to men is that when you pray, go into your inner room and shut the door. So there are things that you need to understand when it comes to men. All right? There are things that you have to understand when it comes to prayer. You have to understand that if we are to speak about the subject of prayer, there is what is called an inner room. An inner what? Now, and Jesus says, go into your it means this room is not shared. It's you personally. And the Bible says, when you enter into your inner room, what should you do? Shut the door. So it means, whatever door that is there, Jesus says, shut the door. Now, this is important. There is a reason why I'm saying it. Shut the door. We are in a generation where people, because they do not understand this simple thing that Jesus taught, people can still enter prayer and still be on WhatsApp. <laughs> Am I communicating with somebody? You are not yet in prayer because that door is too open. Because when you are to enter into prayer, you are entering into a dimension, into a world. So the world you live in, the world you want to be affected by your prayer, you need to shut the door and leave it on the outside. Do you know that you cannot go before God with your problem? You can't. You can never go to God with your problem. You can never appear before him with your problem. You can't. You can't. In the presence of the Lord, your problem. Going with your sickness in the presence of the Lord. How will it survive? How will it survive? You can't. So a lot of people, that is the biggest problem and misconception when it comes to their prayer now. That is why you realize that what men call prayer are requests. So the entirety of mankind, when we say, let us pray, their level of prayer is what? Requests. But there is more that comes with prayer. Because prayer builds men. Mm -hmm. Prayer opens things. So until one understands the levels of prayer, then we are going to have the problem. Because many people will be blaming God of not bringing results. Yet because of lack of understanding, imagine entering into prayer, yesterday I spoke about another, another type of prayer where, where God invites you into prayer, in which God invites a lot of people. He's always inviting you into fast, but when you wake up, there is something that <laughs> he invites you today, don't do anything, pray. He is the one inviting you. So Jesus says, when you pray, shut the door. And when you shut the door, there are two things that the Bible says that will happen when you shut the door in your inner room. Am I communicating with somebody? Amen. There are two things that will happen when you are in your inner room. Because remember, while you are in here, the activity you are doing is prayer. So God is here. All right? God is here. And this is you. And what are you doing? You pray. All right? So this is a channel where you are speaking to God. 
Okay, this is your prayer. And the Bible begins to say something about prayer. The Bible says, when you pray, go into your inner room and shut the door. And the Father, who is God, because every time you need to understand the revelation of prayer. Every time Jesus taught about prayer, you never heard him announce Lord or God. He used the word Father. How many know why? He used the word Father. Because this word Father has a, it, 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 it has a symbolic meaning, even from the interpretation from the Hebrew word. Because what does it mean? Number one, it means provider. Number two, it means sustainer. So the word father means what? Provider and sustainer. So the reason you are being, Jesus, every time he spoke about prayer, he says, pray to the father. He's trying to explain to you that when you are to speak or to ask for anything, you need to, you cannot go to a shop to buy on a shop that he has not, that he has not the thing that you need. So you can't go to Lord because whenever we pronounce God as Lord, every time he's mentioned of Lord, we are talking about war. Every time when a man prays and say, Lord, you are invoking the war part of him. Every time the Bible says, Lord, if you realize and read, it's talking about him as God, as the owner. So every time Jesus spoke, he spoke about the Father. So he said, so when you go into your inner room, shut the door and pray to the Father. Now, look at what the Father does. The Bible says that the father who sees in secret. You are in your secret room. You have shut the door. The Bible says the father who sees. He does not hear. Now, if the Bible says when you enter, shut the door. And the father who sees in secret will reward you openly. In public. What kind of a prayer do you need to do that God does not need to hear it? He sees it. What kind of a prayer do you need to do that God does not hear? He sees. What are you doing in your inner chamber that God has to see? No, let me show you a scripture. Psalms Psalms 141 verse 2. I believe I'm right. Psalms 141 verse 2. I believe it's Psalms 141 verse 2. Uh -huh. Let my prayer be set now, before you. Let my prayer be what? Be set before you uh -huh. as incense. Okay, so let my prayer... So you, you begin to understand that in front of God... How is prayer represented? Because David, if you want to understand prophecy, if you want to be prophetic, if you want to understand the depth of the activities of heaven, try to go around Psalms. It might not be every psalm, but when you understand the language of David, it might break what you thought you knew. So, David says, let my prayer be acceptable. Alright? So, in the physical, you are speaking words. But in the spirit, David is saying the prayer. All right? In the presence of God. Let's say on the throne of God. Is represented as incense. Incense. While you are here, yakada, yakada, ito, ata, ito, ata, ito, in the presence of the Lord, it is like an incense, mm -hmm. an aroma with a fragrance. That is why when you read that scripture in 
Revelation 8. The Bible says, when men pray, I think you can go, there is a video on, you can go and listen to the video. I told about it on YouTube. That when you pray, your prayers do not go to God. There is a gold altar in front of God where an angel, angels that live with prayers on earth at night or in the morning, there are shifts because they are portals. How do you know? Jacob saw a lot of angels ascending and descending. And years later, Jacob was fighting with an angel and an angel said, let me go because it's about to be daybreak. It's about to be daybreak. So that angel, it's the shift of that angel is not a morning one. <laughs> That's why he did not want daybreak to come. Am I communicating with somebody? So, 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 you, you have to understand this so that your prayer life, you will be very conscious. Every man who prays or was made by an angel, if you read clearly, the Bible speaks about the time the angel arrived. Praise God. Praise God. So, it arrives as incense. So, the Bible says when men pray, their prayers are put in an altar and an angel will come with incense. Now, when you read that scripture in Revelation, the Bible says, when the angel comes with incense, the prayers of men will ascend to God with an incense, a smelling aroma. Why? Because the prayers cannot arrive before God when they are not, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to look for a word, well clothed. You can't bring naked prayers before God. Praise God. Amen. So the father who sees, so you, yours are words, but when they become to be in heaven, they translate into something else. I told you that God does not give anyone a car. He gives you a blessing. It is you who translate it to become a car or a house or a husband. Amen. So it, it means there is God. It means I, I will need someone to teach about maybe the transmitters of heaven. That, there is a way things are changed. The waves that are in the atmosphere, there, you need a transmitter to turn the waves to become picture on your TV. But when they are in the air, they are not pictures. They are frequencies. But there is a box that turns them. It is the same with heaven. So our language that we pray with here is not the same language they hear, they hear with in the realm of the spirit. It's not. It is not. That if God is to open you to a language, I wish he would allow us. If God would open you to a language that is uttered in that atmosphere, you might be shocked. You might be shocked. Praise God. Amen. Praise God somebody. Amen. Praise God somebody. Amen. So your father who sees in secret, will reward you openly. He will reward. But what does he do? He sees. So when you enter into the presence of the Lord, you don't need to tell him what you are going through. He knows. Yes, it's written in the book of Matthew 6. It's written. If you go in the book of Matthew chapter number 6, verse 33, it's written. The Bible says the Father knows what you want. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you close the door and he sees in secret. But now you have to understand that as you are praying as a child of God, there are levels of prayer. Let's go to the book of Matthew. The next verse, chapter. Matthew 7, verse 7. Matthew 7, verse 7. Matthew chapter number 7, verse 7. So a lot of people get to a place where when it comes to prayer, many people here are used to, when we say let us pray, to them prayer is just 
let us shout and make noise. There are many kinds of prayer. Many kinds of prayer. Hannah prayed a prayer. Do you know that when Hannah prayed a prayer in the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 1, Hannah was not speaking anywhere, any, any word from her mouth. But she was praying. Her, her lips were just... But inside, when Eli asked, what are you doing? She said, I am pouring out my soul. How can a human soul become liquid? <laughs> she said, I am pouring out my soul. When you read your Bible sometimes, especially when it comes to matters of the spirit and prayer, it might confuse you. Why Paul would say present your bodies as a living sacrifice? No, I didn't finish. Let's go back to that scripture. Matthew 7. No, 7. let's go back to Psalms 141. Verse 2. So when you are praying and you are seated here, you are sitting in here is a prayer. <laughs> Got it. Your sitting in here is a prayer. It's a prayer. Sitting in here and you are saying, Lord, you are worthy. You left your home. Coming in here. You are sitting in here is a prayer. Wow. Okay, let's, let's, let me show you something. Uh-huh. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you. My prayer. Let it not be counted as prayer, but as incense. Why? Because that is the only thing that, is, that God can smell in his presence. All right. In heaven, they smell and they see. Mm. Am I going to get into somebody? Yes, sir. Am I going to get in somebody? Yes, sir. Because you may not understand the language of the spirit because you might hear a trumpet, but the trumpet is speaking a message. You hear a trumpet, but the trumpet will be speaking a message. You might hear the sound of waters, but the sound of waters, there is a language being spoken by the waters. Uh-huh. The lifting up of my hands. Listen to this. The lifting up of my hands. As the evening offering. As the evening offering. Lift up your hands. Imagine David saying the lifting of my hands in, in your presence is, 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 is a what? Evening offering. An evening offering is bright. <laughs> and God loves it. I've never heard God asking for boiled sacrifice. Say bright. And it was always at night. So imagine when someone in church is saying, or a person leading worship and saying, lift up your hands before God. And someone is doing like this. And they are waiting for a time to say, it all, atta, it all, atta. And David is saying, my hands is an evening offering. Yet it was in the lifting of hands that someone would have received a mentor in the spirit. So the house of God, no one needs to be led when it comes to the house of the Lord. That is the only place where men's obedience is tested by God. Because the only currency that God works with is obedience. Any person if there is a currency that God uses is obedience. When God says for the next five days, be fasting. D don't play with that instruction. It is not as if he is hungry or he wants you to be fasting. Uh -uh. He wants to see to what extent can you obey. Are, are we hitting the spot? If God says, be waking up in the morning every day at three and be praying for 30 minutes or 15 minutes. It's not as if it will make a difference to him. It's because God, listen to me, God operates with people he trusts. There is a dimension of power that God will never give you until he trusts you. 
Do you know that God, God spoke to Abraham? Abraham knew God, God was blessing him from Genesis chapter number 12. Do you know that it was only when God asked for his son that God says, now I know that you fear me. For, so all along, what, what was I doing? That it is only when you ask me for a son that you now say, now I know. So you did not know. No, some things that God will do will make you question your work with him. So all along, I, I, I leave my father's house like a madman to go to a place I do not know, walking in the desert year in, year out. So you mean you did not know? <laughs> you mean you did not know? So when you lift up your hands, David is saying it's an offering. It's an offering. Have you ever read your Bible in the book of it's Acts chapter number 10? Where the Bible speaks about Cornelius. Do you know what God says? The angel. Do you know what the angel said to Cornelius? He says, your prayers and your gifts have arrived before God as a memorial. Another version says, as a sacrifice of remembrance. So his prayer and giving combined arrived to God as one offering. It was called a sacrifice of remembrance. That you have remembered me. <laughs> he might have prayed for hours or months. And God said, all of those things. Imagine, imagine praying for one year. <laughs> and when your prayer is put as a package, it's just a box like this. <laughs> When your prayer is presented before God as an offering, it's just a box like this. That's why I told you that now, when it comes to prayer, let's go to, to Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask and keep on asking, All right. and it will be now, given to you. So, here we are going to speak about the three levels. Some will say three levels. Three levels. All right. Number one. Ask. Ask. He says, ask and what? And keep on asking. Ask. And don't stop asking. Keep on asking. asking. Uh-huh. And it will be given to now, you. When you ask, what happens? You will be given. Uh-huh. Number two. Seek and keep on seeking. Seek and keep on seeking. Uh -huh. And you will find. You will find. You what? Find. Number three. Knock and keep on knocking. Knock and keep on knocking. Uh -huh. And the door will be opened to you. Door will. Now, it will surprise you that a lot of people think prayer is just prayer. I told you that everything that is physical, tangible, that you want, God has already given you power to speak to it. That's why when Jesus was hungry, he did not pray to God. When Jesus was hungry, he went to the tree. And the Bible says, in response if you read that scripture, it shows you that Jesus spoke to the tree. Because the Bible says, in response, he cursed the tree. How can I arrive at a tree with green leaves? But if you don't have fruits, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. And when you begin to understand your authority, do you know in the book of, in the book of Psalms, the Bible says, and trees shall bow down in worship of God. You ever made that scripture? That trees have the ability to bow and worship God. Do you know that when, when, when David explained the story of the Red Sea, do you know how David explained it? David says, 
the sea saw the face of God from the road of Moses and fled away. I, I, I told you that when you begin to read the Bible, you ask yourself questions. When he spoke about the mountain, that time when God came on the mountain and people said there was an earthquake, David said, Oh, ye mountain, why were you dancing like a calf when God wanted to sit on you? As a human being, you are hearing an earthquake. David is saying, no, the mountain was dancing like a calf. Do you know that when people were hearing a thunder when God came that day, everyone wrote, Rina went said, there's a thunder, but Moses was hearing the voice of God. Yes. The time when they, because they had gathered and said, we, we, Moses, who made you to be our leader? We also want to speak to that God. And Moses told them, go and bath for three days <laughs> so that you can meet God. Three days, people were bathing. They became yellow bones just to meet God. You don't just come and meet God anyhow. And even they were instructed, let no animal be close to the mountain because once God comes, he sees it, he takes it. That is the nature of God. If you don't give him, he will take that's why certain people experience losses. If you don't give him, he takes, he's protecting you. <laughs> do, do you think the principle of time is, is that God just wants to take from you? No. Understand it well, you'll be surprised. Why you say, no, just give me one, one 10% from your 100. So that I may not take the 90%, just give me 10. Because if you don't give me 10, Still, because I created you, you still need to pay tax. So even the enemy knows it, you, you work at month end, you don't give, it's fine. The child will become sick. It will go to bills. Something has to be taken from you. Either it will go for the right use or to the wrong side. Praise God. So, Jesus began to teach them now, and you begin to understand that as he taught about prayer after teaching us to go in your inner room and shut the door. Shut the door from those problems you are facing. From that business that is not moving. When you enter in here, don't come with that mind in here. Shut the door. Because what I want to do with you here does not need those things that are outside. When you come out of here, I would have rewarded you. And remember, the Bible did not tell us what God is going to reward with. But I'm going to show you what he rewards with. So you are in the secret place. Now, when you are in the secret place, I will touch it as I end. There are these three kinds of prayer. When you are to pray for time, physical things, you speak, you decree, you declare. Job 22 verse 28. You shall decree and declare things; it shall be established unto you in the light of your declaration shall shine upon your path. You can't go to God and be asking for a Mercedes Benz. Is there manufacturing hub of Mercedes Benz in heaven? You know where it is. What do you do? Speak words and create circumstances. Speak words and create circumstances. Am I communicating somebody? Amen. Am I communicating somebody? Amen. Yes. <laughs> if Peter and James, if they had caught fish, they were, not, they were never going to give Jesus that boat. They had to toy all night so that they would give him the boat. Am I communicating somebody? Am I going to get in somebody? Amen. The statement that Jesus spoke on Lazarus, yes, and he says, this was done for the name of the Lord to be glorified. Now, even as we read that scripture, do you know that when Jesus arrived where Lazarus was, Jesus never prayed. Did you read it when he says, I know that you always hear me, but because of these ones that are watching me, 
so that they may know that you sent me. But if he was alone, he was not going to pray. He wasn't. Even when they told him that Lazarus is dead, he never said Lazarus is dead. He said that man is asleep. Do you know that if Jesus had said Lazarus is dead, Lazarus is going to die? He was never going to resurrect. Because as a spiritual person, as you are carrying God, you have creative power. So the moment you're saying my business is dead, don't worry. It is dead. So the reason he says Lazarus is asleep, when he arrived there, he did not say rise up from the dead. He says, Lazarus, come forth. Wake up. <laughs> because we speak things that are not as though they are. But if you are still in the natural, in the flesh, the enemy will use your mouth to destroy your life. That's in what Proverbs chapter number 6, right? 6 verse 2, if I'm not mistaken. That you are snared by the words that came out of your mouth. So when the, he's, there, say, ah, ah, he's asleep. When I arrive there. So when he arrives, I know you hear me. Because in this realm of what we call prayer, when you are now at this realm called prayer, you are at a realm of unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. You can ask or think. So if I just sit and think that I need something, heaven will respond. Even you read your Bible when Jesus says, if you look at your man last flame, you've already committed adultery. You, 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 Jesus is God trying to explain how heaven does things. And you, you only quote where he said adultery. Say, if a man looks at your man last fully, he has committed adultery. What if I look at a car last fully? What have I committed? <laughs> it's a question. What if I look at a business lustfully? So there are things that you need to begin to teach yourself into. That if just by looking, heaven is saying you have done, you looked, you, you didn't do, you just looked or maybe imagined. What if it is now being done in the right way? How does heaven respond? Oh, may, from today, may you begin to imagine things that are profitable in the name of Jesus. Amen. That when you are seated in your house, you are, you are imagining yourself building another mansion. And while you are imagining, you are traveling into the future and creating things in the future. Amen. Now, we are not talking about prayer now. This is what we call prayer now. Mm, 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 no, not words coming out. This is what you call prayer now. Well, when you are seated there in your house, you see why the enemy wants you to have stress. I want you to watch the message I, I told about stress, about worry. The enemy wants you to worry so that your mind is now governed by negative thoughts. So when your mind is now governed by negative thoughts, you are now in trouble. Because every time you are seated and you are thinking those negative thoughts, you are creating. So you wonder why the next day is tough. You created your tomorrow today. So that's why he says when you enter in your secret place, shut the door. Look at him and say shut the door. Look at them and say, shut the door. Shut. Look at them and say, shut the door. Shut the door. Look at your neighbor and say, shut the, shut the door. Look at them and say, shut the door. Shut the door. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 27. Read for me. Ephesians 4, verse 27. Now, he says, shut the what? The door. Right. So, when this is your inner room, you are here. 
the inner room of your heart. Ephesians 4, 4 7. Ephesians 4, verse 27. 27. Yes. 27. 27. And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or Is nurturing that? anger or harboring resentment right. or cultivating bitterness. All right. That is amplified. Yes, sir. All right. Give Which us another one? version. What is your say? Which version do you want? My version. Ah. Uh -huh. Twenty-seven. Uh-huh. Do you want NKJV? Any version. One different version. I want to show you something. Uh-huh. No, give place to the devil. No, give what? Give place to the devil. Place. Another version. I'm coming. Okay. What is that one? Another one say. I'm coming just now. 427. No, give place to the devil. That's no, give UK. place to the devil. Another version. NIV, NIV and do not give the devil a foothold. Do not give a devil a foothold. Foothold. All right, another version. Uh, not amplified. amplified. We, we, are, we have been there. Which one do you want? <laughs> you want ESV? Uh -huh. uh, English Standard Version. And give no opportunity to the devil. Give no opportunity to the devil. Did you read KJV? KJV. Uh -huh. KJV says, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. What place? Neither give place and the, to the devil. The Bible is not saying he will take. You are the one who will give him. Why is the door opened? Hey, Pastor Fortune, you must preach on this one. Why is the door open? Because as long as the door is open, he has access to enter. That's where you went pray. You are and 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 you know you, you know when Pastor Tobias is leading prayer when. He's, 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 he's feeling it. Rata, he rata, he rata, and you'll be rata, he rata, he rata. And all of a sudden, while you are, while you are in, that, in that wave, you are in that vein, you are in that wave, you are in that vein, you just hear your landlord's voice <laughs> saying, I want my money today. <laughs> that level you are in, <laughs> no matter you were now in cloud nine, you go back to level zero. <laughs> the door was still open. Yeah. But there's a level of prayer where you go, where you even forget time. That is where now the door is closed. Mm. We have been there. And you remember, last week there is a girl. The, 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 the devil, no say, no, you say, remember that girl. You think like everyone is seeing and knows what happened at that moment. It will be worse if you are the loudest in, 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 in church because the way your prayer will be watered down, people will know that something has happened. <laughs> do not give place to the devil. Another version said do not give room. He will not take, you are the one who gives him. No, you are the one who gives him room. Okay, let's, let's do it on here. So ask. So Jesus saying on prayer, there's a first level of prayer called the asking one. Where you ask. You can only ask to a person who has. So it means you need knowledge of what God has for you to ask. You don't just go before God and ask. And you can only ask what you know that you'll be given. Uh, oh, oh. So <laughs> you cannot be ignorant to ask on something that you do not know it will be given and that you do not know that he has. So that's why every scripture when he spoke about prayer, Jesus says whatsoever you ask, 
according to my will. So you have to know what he wants to give you for you to ask. You don't just ask anything. There are prayers we pray in church and when we pray sometimes let us just pray them for entertainment <laughs> and for activity's sake. But in genuine truth, even you, you know that God will not answer this prayer. <laughs> let us just entertain each other. I saw, I saw a video yesterday of, of uh, it was a boy, he was seated like on a mountain, on a mountain show, you are saying, Give me Sister Janet or I die. Give me Sister Janet or I die. Give me Sister Janet or I die. Father, I, pray. I said, <laughs> if God is to answer your prayer, it might be that you die. <laughs> but this Sister Janet, God might have someone for her. So what you are asking, do you, is it in the will of God? Or is just that she's a yellow bone? I, I love or I die. Imagine an angel appearing and say, okay, are you ready to die? <laughs> even that prayer, listen, even that prayer, imagine God himself, if God was to hear prayer, not see, I've opened something, we'll go deeper in it as we go with man's. If God was to hear prayer, imagine saying, give me sister Janet or I die. God, the father, hearing it. Imagine your father, your father, Speaking to your father like that. <laughs> your father will look at you. No matter how it's a, it's a woman praying, give me, give me brother, what, 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 what. God will say, so, so with all the things you can die for. <laughs> with, with, with all the things. <laughs> Not, not give me anointing. <laughs> not, not, not bless me like Abraham so that my other families and people around me can be blessed because of me or I die. You want to bribe, die for Sister Janet. <laughs> that when you die, she will find brother Jonathan. I'll move on with life. So imagine. It might be a joke, but imagine. Will such a prayer be answered by God? You are a joker. So that is why when prayer in front of God is not words, it's an incense. And incense is fragrance. So sometimes angels have to add fragrance because certain prayers of people, they are not, the perfume is not much because there's no adoration to God. Even when God answers, he does not answer with material things. It is you who translate it to be a material thing. So ask and it will be given. So anything that can be given to you, Nana, it's something that you ask. But for you to be given, you need to know how to receive. Yeah. Because people have been taught God gives, but do you know how to receive? If you ever read your Bible and Jesus spoke about the parable of the sower, he says, and they received the word with joy. No, you, you didn't get it. Amen. Bible did not say with their hands. The word with, it means with. Whatever is being spoken after is the vehicle. So joy becomes the vehicle of receiving. Ah, you, didn't, you didn't get it. The reason why when you, when the Bible says enter his courts, Psalms 100, with praise and thanksgiving. There is a reason that if you are to come out from there with something <laughs> tangible, you can't go there with moods there. Uh -uh. Your joy is your cup. That's why David says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Imagine what is the combination between joy and strength? So you have to be excited. You can't, you, you can't just be coming in the house of God. Uh, especially, especially sometimes, you, you, you see, as, as pastors, when it's praise and worship, we are like as if we are speaking with angels. Like. <laughs> and by that time, people are receiving. 
When I was waiting for the time, maybe you shall preach and pray. Ah, people are receiving when the praise go up, his glory comes down. When I was waiting for, receive your car. <laughs> oh, continue. <laughs> so ask and you shall be given and they receive with joy. So the first kind of receiving is joy. All right? The second thing, let us write it down. All right? So number one, you receive with what? Joy. Number two, the Bible says a carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit, but their spiritual what? Descend. A carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually descend. So the second way of receiving is discernment. Yes. So everything you ask, you need to have joy, you need to have discernment. Because sometimes what you need is given to you. But because you do not know. The reason why it has to be given is because when it comes, like what I said, it does not come as the thing you want. She might not be the destiny opera you are praying for, but she knows the destiny opera. So if you don't treat her well, she might not introduce you. And you might still be praying for years, yet by the time you missed her, you missed your season. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You know, there are people that were invited to say, no, let us go for lunch. And they said, no, I can't go with you for lunch. Not knowing that that is the time they're going to meet their future husband. The person he was going to meet was the future husband. <laughs> and the person will still be praying, yata, yata. God is saying, but you did not discern that that day when that event was to happen, that was the day. That was the day. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. Okay. Number two, seek and you will find. Seek. Anything you seek is hidden. Anything you seek is in the secret. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Say seek. seek. Say seek. seek. Read um, Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and <laughs> live righteously and he will give you everything you need. My God. NLT. Uh -huh. You want NKJV? Mm -hmm. Another type? Another? Yes, another type. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. Say it shall be added. It shall be added to you. Say it shall be added. It shall be added. Say it shall be added. It shall be added. Say it shall be added. It shall be added. So seek. Seek. To seek something, it means you are searching. No, so there's a prayer of asking where you are just asking. You are asking for something. You see, Paul asked. He had a thorn in his flesh and he asked, God, remove the thorn. He was asking. Asking does not mean sometimes it will be granted. He was asking for a thorn to be removed. And what did God say? My grace is sufficient. It was an answer. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now seeking, you are seeking. And what, what you are seeking is a secret. Where we read the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom. The what? Kingdom. The what? The kingdom. the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. righteousness. So these two things, you have to seek for them. Seek the kingdom. Seek his economy. Seek a world. The kingdom, it's a world. You have to seek until you are in an environment of the kingdom. Where the king rules his domain. You know, many people said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, but they are not, Jesus is not Lord over their life. They are still ruling themselves. Mm. 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 The kingdom. The kingdom. When the kingdom is now in your heart, 
You can't do the way you want to do things. You can't. Sometimes, sometimes you are busy. You want to buy that pie. He said, uh-huh. He said, oh, I know you like pie. Aha, uh-huh. you like pie. Okay, it is well. You see that person, give it to him. And you are surprised after you give. A word. That person might just speak a word or a blessing. In the next month, you are surprised you are entering into a season you have never entered. His Lord. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. When you now find the kingdom, you have found his economy. So the reason why he says seek first the kingdom, he wants you to be a citizen. Every man in the Bible, they were seeking for a land. Abraham sought for a land. The Israelites sought for a land. What are you seeking for? Because when he says seek the kingdom, many people I do not know, when you speak this scripture, it is spoken in all nights. The moment you say, seek the kingdom, everybody's like, yata, yata. When you say seek the kingdom, the kingdom is a place. You have to be that, that a citizen. And a citizen of a kingdom has to understand that there is a constitution they live by. So God wants you to be a citizen. And when you, have a, when you are a citizen, you have rights. Hi. Let me close here. When you have rights in a country, there are things you have for free. There are things you demand. There are services you demand. Once you get to that position, Pastor T, where you understand you're living in the kingdom, that you can demand certain things in God, so, ah, God, I can't live like this. I can't. Because now you have rights in him. But as long as you are not in the kingdom, you can't have the boldness to just come and speak. You will still be here on the asking. <laughs> Those that seek and find, these ones that find the kingdom, don't play with them. So there are things that you seek when it comes to God. Secrets. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Psalms 25, verse 14. Psalms 25, verse 14. Let's close around there. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. The secret of the Lord is with those who what? Fear him. Who fear him. Do you fear God? Yes, sir. Do you fear God? Amen. I'm, I'm not saying fearing God that he will kill you. Do you fear God? Yes. You know, the Holy Spirit said something to me two days back. He says, if you find me, you will be jealous to lose me. What is your vision saying? The secret of the Lord is with you who fear him. Who fear him. So if you fear God, there is a secret. Because you can't fear him if you are not in him. Am I communicating with somebody? Amen. You can't fear him if you are not in him. It's different from the fear of danger. Uh -uh. This fear is a different one. Because every time you encounter God in this kingdom, that's why every time when an angel would appear in the Bible, what the first thing the angel would say is fear not. It is only God that can be feared. And the fear, if you search the fear, is not the fear of emotions. Praise God. Another vision does not use fear. It, it says that secrets of the Lord are with the righteous. Because if you fear him, you will be right with him. So the fear of the Lord is with the righteous. And what is being righteous? Being obedient. Being obedient. And Abraham believed in God. It was considered to him as righteousness. Praise God. Number three, knock. Somebody say knock. knock. Somebody say knock. knock. Somebody say knock. knock. Knock and what? It shall be opened. What shall be opened? The door. 
I declare that let my door be opened. Amen. Let my door be opened. Amen. Do you know what you are doing? Huh? You can't say please. I ask my door to be open. Uh -uh. You can't seek for a door to be open. The Bible says knock. The prayer of knocking is not a common, a common a pop and fleece prayer. Uh -uh. When you knock on the door, even we, we, we will hear it that this one, there is a door they are knocking in the spirit. When you are praying for that door of promotion, we will know. The Bible says when you knock, the door will be open. The door will be open. On, on our next session, we will talk on how to pray these prayers. The door will be opened. Praise God. Praise God. Revelation 3 verse 8. The door will be opened. Now, there is a question that I would want to ask you. What is it that will be opened? The door. Amen. I have a question. Yes, you are, you are holding the mic. I have a question. Sorry. You are holding the mic. I have a question. So who will open the door? Uh, because it seems like you are being opened into entering somewhere. And Jesus is talking about prayer. He's saying the door will be opened. Which shows you that there has to be someone inside. You are not hearing. The reason you pray the prayer of knocking is because there is something you need access to that you do not have access to because there is a door that is closed. So your prayer of knocking is for the door to be opened so that you can have access to that very same thing. What is that scripture saying? I know your deeds. I know your deeds. Revelation 3, 8, right? Yes. Uh -huh. See, uh -huh. I have set before you. I have set before you. An open door. An open door. Which no one is able to shut. Which no one will be able to shut. For you have little power. You have little power. And you have kept my word. Mm -hmm. And have not renounced or denied my name. Now, now the, the key I have given... That key, that, that key there, you don't need to go further. You, if you can sit with that key for one hour until you find the components on that scripture, there are doors that will open. No, no, repeat it, repeat it. I know your deeds. I know your deeds. No, 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 no. I know your what? Deeds. Okay. God did not say, I see. He says, I know. See, mm -hmm. I have set before now, you. What is God saying? The, the next word. See. The next word. See. So if you don't have eyes. You need insight. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> you need to be blind. This, this is painful. Because he's not directing you. He says see. It is you who see. If there are three doors and he says see. <laughs> because remember, even the devil opens doors. I know. We are out of time. <laughs> Read it. I have set before you uh -huh. an open door. An open door. Which no one is which able to shut. No one. It, means, it means, Pastor T, there are doors that can be shut. Yes. And there are people and entities that can shut people's doors. My God. Or on itself. I told you, I told you, when you read scripture, don't read as if you have borrowed Bible. Please, keep on reading. Don't say I was not giving you time to preach. For you have a little power uh -huh. and have kept my word. You have kept my word. And have not renounced or denied my name. You have not denied my name. Like many people when they are in problems. Now so. They deny his name. Jesus. He did not say you have denied me. He said my name. My God. If you know.
know the secret of God's name, you understand. God was given a name that is above every other name. Ish. What have you gone through that you belittled God's ability? No, read it, it so that you you won't say you won't say apostle has not given me time to preach. Read it again. King James version this time. Uh-huh. I know thy works. I know thy works. works. Those things you do, God say I know them. I'm not seeing them. I know them. Even before you do, I know them. Uh huh. Behold, behold, I have set before thee an open door. I have set it's you you. It's an open door, and no man can shut now, it. This door, no matter demon from your father's side, mother's side, that prayer, don't do it. Don't do on this door. Don't pray that prayer. There are no spiritual goalkeepers or doorkeepers on this prayer. Uh huh. Uh huh. The Lord says, I have opened. Uh huh. And no man can shut it. No man. It means there are men who can shut your door. Be Jesus. careful. For thou hast little strength. You have little strength. God is saying, I know. And have you has kept my word. You have kept my word. And have not denied my name. You have not denied my name. Mm. You my have not God. denied my name. So the secret is already God knows. The moment you get to the revelation of that God knows you, when you enter into prayer, you won't be condemning yourself. God knows you. Do you know there are people that want to pretend in the presence of God? How can you pretend you are holy yet you know that you are doing things on the corner? God knows you. Just go. That's why Jesus says, unless you have a heart of a child. A child will enter that bedroom even if they are not dressed. Akri, you are my father, you are my mother. Aha, what's your problem? If you say I'm naked, you clothe me. What's your problem? Enter with boldness. He's not your Lord when it is in prayer. He's your father. He's your provider and sustainer. Jesus. So God knows you. God knows you. Amen. He says no. Amen. He says no. No. That door you are praying for, that door, that door, that door, that's that door, you say, I need that door for those tenders. That door. Don't ask. Knock. Knock on that door. Enter into intercession. Begin to knock. When you knock, you speak to the door. When you knock, you make, you make contact with the door. You create a circumstance with the door. A prayer, oh God, please, if you want, give me no, 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 no contact in specifics. How are you making contact now? When you are knocking, it means you know what you want that is inside. So your sound has to affect everything inside. So if there is someone you know who is a tender that you want. Hmm? And you're praying for that door. And you know their name. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. You begin to create circumstance. You begin to create circumstance. Praise God. Amen. All right. Last scripture. Matthew. Okay. First Kings chapter number six. Second Kings six verse number 17. Second Kings six 17. I'll close from here. I'll start from here. Next week. Second Kings 6, 17. And Elisha prayed. Elisha, listen, Elisha prayed, prayed. And, said, and said, Lord, I pray, uh-huh. open his eyes uh-huh. that he may see. Now, now. All right, wait. Now, I want to show you something before I go to that scripture. Come. Now, what did I do? Called. Huh? You called. Do you know that there are people that are doing things by the name I was called, but they were not assigned? 
calling. <laughs> I called you. <laughs> that you have a calling. When I say come, that was a calling. Yes. I that. But I haven't assigned you. I haven't told you what to do. So there are many that are doing things out of I'm cold. Mm-hmm. Hey. <laughs> Yet you might have called them to come and pray. Mm-hmm. Assignment. Yet you might have called them out of sin, not for them to go and preach, to come into his presence. Jesus. And not go anywhere. Hey. Yeah. That you were called does not mean you were sent. Hey. Calling means come. Sent means go. Amen. Uh huh, uh huh. Amen. <laughs> it can be activity, but it's not involved. <laughs> uh, people can gather. People, people can gather. Because they were not there when God spoke to you. (laughs) So what? Okay. So when a door, you are knocking a door, right? That that one just came. Elisha prayed. Gehaz was blind. Right? All right, come. Cover your eyes. So Gehaz was blind, right? He saw the armies of the Syrians, Gehaz, with blind spiritual eyes. He saw physical armies. And he runs to Elijah. Do you know what he said? My father, my father, the armies and the chariots are gathered. We are dead. Mm. Elijah looks at Gehaz. Now, I want you to get this. Elijah is in the realm of the spirit. Gehaz is in the realm of the what? Physical. It means he needs to what? To enter. It means he needs to what? To enter. Elijah prayed to God. And he said, Lord, open the eyes. Come, 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 come. You are God today. <laughs> he says, God, open the eyes of the young man. Hey. Now, are, are you there? I'm there, sir. Okay, okay, read. I want you to say something. Now, when the eyes were opened, what is it saying? Then the Lord uh-huh. opened the eyes of the young then man. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, meaning they were closed. Yes. And he saw... What is opened is closed. Do you know that your eyes are doors and windows to the realm of the spirit? Mm. Let me tell you the truth. Do you know that a majority of people that are demon possessed, they got demon possessed by sin? Yes. Mm. 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 Uh-huh. And he saw. When his eyes were opened, he saw. Uh huh. Mm. And behold, and behold, uh-huh. the mountain was full of horses and chariots. The mountain was full of horses and chariots. Now, wait. The mountain. The mountain. Now, this man is now in the spirit. My question is, which mountain? Maybe this one is for, for the, the mountain. Uh-huh. The mountain is... It was full of horses and chariots was, of fire all around Elisha. Of, wait, was full of horses and chariots uh-huh. all around Elisha. Repeat that last statement. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. No, no, no. How big is Elisha? <laughs> Are you <mountain>. sure? <laughs> because the, the horses and chariots were not surrounding them, they were surrounding him. That's deep. Elisha. They were standing beside each other. But when his eyes are opened, he's seen chariots around Elisha. Mm. How big is one chariot? And the Bible says that they were surrounding the mountain. Yes. 
So where was Elisha standing in the spirit? And where was Gaius? Because he was not surrounded by chariots. So you have to understand that this is another realm. When you begin to pray, I pray, may God put you in your own environment. That's why the Bible says, go into your room. We are living in different worlds. Am I communicating somebody? Amen. Am I communicating somebody? Amen. Sit down. I want you to declare this declaration as we close. <laughs> I want you to declare this. It's, a, it's an important declaration. Say, may the heavens, may the heavens over, my head over my head be opened. Be opened. Say, may the heavens, may the heavens over, my head over my head be opened. Be opened. May the heavens, may the heavens over, my head over my head be opened. Be opened. May the heavens, may the heavens over my head, over my head be opened. Be opened. May the heavens, may the heavens over my head, over my head be opened. Be opened. May the heavens, may the heavens over my head, over my head be opened. Be opened. I command them to open. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse 23. Stand up. You're closing. Put your offering in your hand. What well, we are going to declare the same declaration. I want to show you something. We can be together, but we are not together. <laughs> that is why I'm calm when it comes to people. How much? Deuteronomy chapter number. Okay, dethrone your enemy. Chapter number twenty-eight, verse twenty-three. Twenty-eight, verse twenty-three. Twenty-three. Uh-huh. Come, 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 come. I'm coming, sir. Twenty-eight, uh -huh. verse twenty-three. My God. Uh huh. 23. Put, put this on your head. Let me teach you spiritual things. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me teach you spiritual things. All right. Do you know why people do this? You don't know. Why? You don't. I don't know. They're shutting the door. Come on. Oh my God, yes. All right. You don't just enter God's presence, ne? You need to enter into your room. Uh-huh. And your heavens. And your, not our. Your. And your heavens, which are over your head. Which are over your head. Shall be bronze. Shall be bronze. Imagine. Kaya uh -huh. Don't start, don't start. We have, we, have we have to finish. We have to finish. We have to finish. Read. And your heavens which are over your head shall and be the bronze. heavens which are over your head shall be bronze. Shall be bronze. Meaning you'll be like, Aratata. it will be bouncing on bouncing bronze and coming back to you. Jesus. Uh -huh. And the earth which is under you shall be iron. And the earth which is under you, where you want to go do business and plant, mm -hmm. it shall it's be iron. iron. Jesus. That no peak will enter. Mercy, Lord. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive. Your heavens will not be bronze. Amen. And your ground will not be iron. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This is where many people do not understand. Everybody has an atmosphere of heaven over them. But the question is, what is over your head? I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive. Your heavens may they be open. Amen. Your heavens may they be open. Amen. I say your ground shall not be iron. Amen. I say your ground shall not be hard. Amen. May you do business where you plant, you shall harvest in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your heavens shall not be brass. Amen. You shall not pray prayers that shall bounce back to you. Amen. You shall not pray prayers that shall bounce back to Amen. you. Amen. I say your heaven shall not be brass. Amen. Any brass that was over your head, oh, let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. My God. 
Many people's prayers seem like they are not responsive because there is a brass over their head. And witches have understood such scriptures that believers have not. So they will leave you live life under closed heavens. My God. When, when the Bible says when John was baptized Jesus, the Bible says the heavens over his head were opened. Hey. It means for years they were not open. Open my heavens, Lord. I open pray by the heavens. power of the open Holy Ghost. Heavens. May open. the heavens over your head be open. Amen. May the heavens over my head be open. Amen. May the heavens over your head be open. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If, so your, if your ground is iron, it means nothing grows. Jesus. It can never be. It that shall not be your portion. It, that you start a business and it will not grow. It cannot be. In the name and the blood of Jesus. It shall grow. Whatever you start, uh-huh. your, your ground shall not be iron. Amen. It shall germinate, sprout, and Amen. grow. Amen. And you shall eat the fruits of your labor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We have I thank you, word. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mereda la mando kobarata. Zerendo kombre talaka wita kurate le mando kai. La brende kaya te balaske baratala. Mazume toli has eveleta. We thank you, Father. Eleboros kanamba rade kayata. Zebarushande katai boridaka. Alege ba aiton mahala. Suala tobala le kobarata. Decree. Decree. Speak on your neck. Language. May my heavens be opened. May my heavens be opened. Jesus. The heavens over my head. The heavens over my head. The heavens over my head. Be opened. 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 The heavens over my head. Amen. Financially be opened. Amen. The heavens over my head. Amen. Academically be opened. Amen. The heavens over my head. Amen. Ministerially. Be Amen. Open. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Hey, I receive. May the Lord be with you. I receive. As you are giving your offering, I pray that the Lord bless you. As you are giving your tithe, may the Lord rebuke the devourer for your Amen. sake. Amen. I pray, may you never be dry. May you never be. Empty. Amen. May the Lord go to heaven and show you grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God be with you, good people. Thank you. Let Jesus. me see you on our next session in Jesus' name. I believe you are blessed and may the Lord increase you and touch you wherever you are. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to say, Dear Lord Jesus, Come into Dear my Lord heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. Wash me with your precious blood. From today, From today I am now your son. I am now your son. I accept I accept. I believe with my heart. I believe in my heart. And confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. That you are the son of God. That you are the son of God. And that you died. That you died. And rose again. And you rose again. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Erase my name. Erase my name from the book of death. From the book of death. And write my name. Write my name in the book of life. In the book of life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. And I bless your name. I bless your name. That you have washed my sins. That you have washed my sins. And I'm white as snow. And I'm white as snow. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for welcoming me into your kingdom. Into your kingdom. I am now your child. I'm now your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer. May God bless you, inbox us, message us, and uh, we will get to a place where you will learn more about your walk in Christ. God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' name, God bless you.